But what happened next is a disaster in the making. The United States is built on certain freedoms and freedom number one is to speak up your mind freely. This term cancel culture came up in the recent days. That's just a soft and misleading word for censorship. Do not make America great again. Just keep America great. You'd better wake up. I'd like to find out at what temperature does freedom burn? Are we there yet? How does freedom of speech compare in the USA and in Russia? Gosh, I've never thought I'd ever say that, ever. If you want to hear how the events unfolding in the USA look from Russia, watch this video until the end. If we are meeting for the first time, my name is Konstantin and welcome to Letters to King. We're living in today's Russia explained by the insider you can trust. That's me, I'm the insider. Couple words on why I am competent to speak on such sensitive and specific issue as the happenings inside of the USA. I spent 10 years in the USA. I was educated there and then I was educated in Russia. I studied political science both in Russia and in the USA, and yes, I am competent. I have family in the USA, I know I follow the events that are unfolding right now, and I know what I'm talking about. On January 7th, the Capitol building was broke into and ransacked. I made a very emotional video as the events were unfolding. You can watch it, the link is right here. At first, I thought that a bunch of criminals wanted to overtake the U.S. Senate and Congress. A couple weeks later, you know, uh, all emotions calmed down, I changed my opinion. I think that angry mob consisted of regular Americans. They were protesting outside of the Capitol. And, you know, they were very emotional, very angry. And it just happened that some of them stormed the Capitol. A lot of people went with the flow and I'm sure that a lot of people who went inside didn't mean bad. They meant well. They were protesting, they were angry and they were trying to be heard. It was a very bad decision. They certainly shouldn't have gone in. But was it a coup? Was it an attempt to overthrow the American government? I don't think so. By one simple reason, people did not stay there. They did not occupy the capital. They just stormed inside. Uh, a lot of them looked surprised. They looked around and left. They didn't stay. They didn't make any public statements. They didn't uh, blackmail anyone. They were criminals, of course. The ones who ransacked the building, who destroyed property, who stole things, who went through notebooks of the US senators and congressmen and watched the confidential information. But I don't think it was such a catastrophic disaster for the United States. An embarrassment? Oh yes, you bet, it was an embarrassment. The whole world is still laughing. And the people, they should have known better. There are so many ways to be heard in the United States through voting, through peaceful protesting. They should have protested all week long around the Capitol, but they shouldn't have set their feet inside of that sacred building, okay? But hey, things happen. If I were an American, I'd be asking a few questions. The first question is, why isn't FBI doing its job? Where are the investigations? Where are the reports? Where are the arrests? Where are the property, recovered property that was stolen on January 7th? What about access to that sensitive classified information? The second question is, why no government agency is held responsible for this entire mess that happened. Uh, there have been a lot of finger pointing at each other, but where are the results? Who is responsible? Why isn't there the answer? Why aren't Washington DC officials questioned and held responsible for this thing that happened within their jurisdiction? Why haven't any Capitol Police members charged and uh, questioned on this whole thing. What about the police officers who opened the doors and let the protesters in? That certainly was a crime, okay? One cop was crushed, killed, basically. Why no one is answering for that? If I were in your shoes, I'd be furious. 
I'd be grilling the officials with these questions. And I wonder why people in the USA are not doing that. That's beyond my understanding. Perhaps looking at things happening in the United States, I'm being wrong, okay? But uh, these are serious issues, right? Uh, please help me out. Let me know in the comments, what do you think on the issues? Why aren't you asking the questions? Or perhaps you are. What's going on? Let's discuss it because, hey, these are serious challenges and you just can't keep silence on that. Again, storming the capital was embarrassing, but it was not such a huge, huge disaster. Probably a mistake for some people, criminal mistake, and for some, the majority. It was a stupid mistake, all right? Things happen. Embarrassment, yes. The whole world is laughing, yes. But hey, you know what? That doesn't hurt much. But what happened next? is a disaster in the making. That's probably the most important issue, challenge, a problem, catastrophe in the entire US history. It certainly is the biggest challenge the country has faced in the last 100 years. After the capital was ransacked, the actions followed. A lot of people, a lot of Americans were angry. The censorship was enacted in the United States, perhaps for the first time in history. A messenger used by the Trump supporters, Parler, was shut down. Uh, the latest I checked, the Trump supporters were the citizens of the United States, protected by the Constitution. They have rights and freedoms. They have freedom of speech. And they can say whatever they want. And people can disagree or agree. But taken away, their ability to communicate and spread their word is censorship, my friends. And it's so un-American, that's beyond belief. The actions were actually swift. A couple days later, Parler was shut down. There have been talks about shutting down messengers, private messengers, such as Telegram. It's not even an American messenger. How can you shut it down? But I'm sure in the United States, big tech companies can. If you're finding this video interesting, please consider liking it and subscribing so you don't miss any further updates. And please share it in the social media. Hopefully they won't censor it. I dare you. Let's find out if they censor your message with my video. There have been talks about censoring private messages in messengers. Censoring posts on Facebook. Ah, give me a break. Then it got worse. I was watching CNN and I could not believe my eyes. People were coming out publicly and speaking of enacting official censorship to silence Trump supporters. To turn down the capability of these conservative influencers to reach these huge audiences. And then we're gonna have to figure out the OANN and Newsmax problem. You know, that these companies have freedom of speech, but I'm not sure we need Verizon, AT&T, Comcast and such to be bringing them into tens of millions of homes. I don't really like Donald Trump, and very few people do, okay? He's, well, this he's not the topic of this video, but you know what? He certainly is an American citizen, and all his supporters who believe him, they have a right to do so. They have a right to speak up. They have a right to, you know, congregate. They have a right to protest. What's going to happen next? The protest rights will be taken away? Is this Russia or America? I couldn't believe what I saw on CNN. Who do these guys think they are? <laughs> Let me tell you, 20 years ago, when I first came to the USA, these things were unthinkable, okay? Everyone kept telling me, because I was fresh off the boat, they were telling me, listen, the United States is built on certain freedoms, and freedom number one is to speak up your mind freely. You can have whatever opinion, you know, uh, we might disagree with that, but you have a right and we'll defend your right. And now, instead of defending the rights of Trump supporters speaking up, they're taking their rights away. This is so wrong. If you think that someone is breaking the law, someone talking their mind up and, uh, you know, uh, spreading dangerous ideas such as extremist terrorists, you investigate them. You bring up charges, you arrest them, you try them in court, convince them and throw to jail. But you cannot take away a sacred right to 
freely think and speak. This term, cancel culture, came up in the recent days. Well, my friends, that's a very, very misleading term. That's not cancel culture. That's just a soft and misleading word for censorship. It seems like America is sleeping. I mean, people wake up. What's going on in your wonderful, marvelous country? I, I have hard time understanding. You see, America is so unique country in the world because one thing, its constitution, its rights that everyone in America has, okay, it doesn't matter who, uh, everyone is equal, everyone is free to speak up their mind, to own property, to defend property, with, to bear firearms, to do business. That's the only country that has this unique set of rules. And what we're seeing right now is this, this set of rules is being destroyed. And it seems like people are silent about this, all right? Uh, I don't think it, it, this is a matter that concerns Trump. I think it's a matter that concerns all the Americans, okay? Democrats, Republicans, this concerns regular people now, okay? Regular Americans, fellow Americans. Do not make America great again. Just keep America great. You will do the world a great favor if you keep your country, whatever it has been over 200 years. Don't destroy this precious material that your country is built upon. What are you doing? If you want to see lack of freedoms, if you want to see complete and utter censorship on every corner, come to Russia. Hey. Come visit me. You can stay in my house. I will take you and show you around. I'll s you will see how things are done here. You will see what happens when people try to speak up freely. Have you heard of a uh, last name Navalny? Well, go ahead and Google and you see what happens when people let the power that they have in their hands to the government, okay? Russia 15 years ago was more or less free country. And you know what? We did not wake up in a complete censorship tyranny overnight. It happened by small step. I call it stepping stones. Okay, first they passed a law prohibiting uh, speaking for this topic. Then they passed another law. And a series of many, 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 many steps has brought us to uh, this mess, this situation, this reality that we are living. If you want to live in a country like Russia, so please let others in your wonderful country do whatever things they are doing. But if you want to remain in a free society, in a free country, then wake up. This is my advice for you from Russia. Wake up and take the charge. Keep America great. Don't let it don't let it be destroyed. And you know what? It doesn't take much. Keep on shutting down messengers just because people, uh, you know, write each other things that you don't like. Keep on censoring posts in social media. And in 15 years, you will wake up in a complete tyranny and you will be asking yourself questions. How did we get here? Okay, so you'd better wake up. You know, I have a pretty good idea how Americans have let it happen have let it go so far and I'm going to speak on this issue in my next video. So please tune in.